once again, here she is, Josiane. Hi, welcome, welcome to my show, Tony Carroll. It's a pleasure to have you again for part two of our show. And we also have uh, Danny Darrow as our guest. We, we have to talk about your book. You wrote a book about, uh, famous about um, Tony's oil story. Could you please tell us all about it? This is so oh. interesting. We start talking a little bit about part one and we didn't have a chance to finish. It's such a wonderful story. Okay, Josie, and it goes like this. Thank you. Thank you again for having me back. It's been we so, so much just fun. Well, thank you, thank you again thank for you. being it's here wonderful. and again, having me back. <laughs> Come on, I'm a guest also. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Josie Ann, mm -hmm. okay, the oil, uh, Tony's oil story is really a screenplay. I have finished it and it's ready to be produced in it's the movie. It's a movies. true story, right? It's a true story, uh, as I mentioned before, about this female that found oil and gas on the North American continent and uh but that was you that was me yeah that was me. good and we made headlines we made headlines in all the newspapers in canada and all of the newspapers here in america and so my agent back in new york city this was way out in st Clair, michigan and in southwestern ontario canada where the oil fields were uh, i found them all because i had an interest in a subject called paranormal Right. And, mm. and there's a university in Virginia Beach, which is called Atlantic University. And the, I knew that they needed more funds to get the, the university going. And I thought, well, why don't I find, in my spare time, why don't I find oil and gas for them so that I can make a contribution? Wow. And lo and behold, here I am on the road doing my nightclub back, working all the hotels all over America. And I have a lot of time during the day. And I began to study uh, subjects of geology because I was interested in oil and gas. Basically, I think I was propelled to be interested because I had an older brother who was always fossil hunting. Do you know what fossil is? Oh, yeah. oh sure. Oh, yeah. sure. It's like uh, dead animals in the earth and he would go and dig them up and bring them home. Yeah, and yeah. I was just a little kid and I would be so fascinated. But it was then I decided that I was interested in earth and the geology and the structure of the mm -hmm. earth, etc. And I think that that's what made me go into the oil and gas business and I did it during the day, part time. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, I happened to be booked. William Morris' office always seemed to book me exactly where I needed to be to find the oil and gas. Oh, how so, wonderful. So I was singing at night in a place called the St. Clair Inn in St. Clair, Michigan. Yeah, yeah. And I was drilling for oil and gas during the day. Yeah, oh, my. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and you came into the shows full of oil and full of gas and you smelled smelly <laughs> no, and you I were dirty and no, filthy? No, I was not smelly. I'm sorry I don't have any pictures here, but I always managed to look a lot like this. <laughs> oh, all right. And that's the reason that I pay $4.50 a gallon for, for gas today because I, of you? I don't <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so either. Okay. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but anyway, so what happened is uh, my agent in New York was reading the newspapers about me in, in Michigan, mm -hmm. and he didn't even know I had this hobby. Yeah, yeah, don't oh, my, I think yeah. He didn't even know I had this hobby, mm -hmm. and he said, oh, by the way, they read about you on the Johnny Carson show. They want you on the show. Yeah. And so, you know, so they booked me on the show, and I go on the show, and, and who's on the show but Yogi Berra and Joe Garagiola? <laughs> now, the other coincidence. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yogi and that was Berra. the neighborhood that you came from That's in St. Louis. That's the neighborhood that I came from in St. Louis, Missouri. So those were your neighbors, actually, weren't well, they? Well, they were my mother's friends. Uh, her, yeah. her, uh, my mother was friendly with Yogi's mother. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, and Joe Garagiola. They just lived a block away from us. Oh, it's nice. just a coincidence. Well. Yeah, okay, so go ahead. Uh, so finally, now we get on, I get on the uh, Tonight Show with them. Yeah. And they're talking about St. Louis, naturally. They forgot to talk about the oil and gas. They yeah. forgot all about the headlines because they knew me as an entertainer and a singer. And lo and behold, there I am on the show with them. And so we're just having fun, a lot like we're having fun right here. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. And so I just jumped on Yogi's lap and I sang, Yogi, let's you and I sing an Italian song. Yeah, and your wife better not see the show. <laughs> No, I didn't do that. You didn't do that, okay. No. <laughs> anyway, so he said, oh, oh I don't sing? sing, I don't sing. I said, oh, you'll get it, you'll get it. You'll get it. So, uh, all you have to do is um, say, say la, la, la. Bo, 
volare. Can you say vo? He said, yeah, I can say volare. Bon okay. Volare. Oi <laughs> vey. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And anyway, so it was a lot of fun. Good. If you get a chance, go to go and find me on my website. Yeah, where is it? Where is it? Copagirl.com. And you'll see that particular uh, show. Is. Yeah, that's, wait, that's copagirl.com. Yes, and okay. you'll see yes. me on the okay. show with Yogi, me getting him to sing Volati. Yeah, all right. But well, was he, he singing too? He, he tried. He tried, but he didn't make it? Uh, no, but I made it. Oh, you made it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, we're going yeah, to keep that a secret. You also have a brilliant career as an entertainer, a nightclub performer. And you, for your recording for MGM and uh, RCA Victor. Yes. You did a lot for them. You did a lot of recording and uh, stuff for them. But you? even all my recordings were just sheer luck and a coincidence. Yeah, yeah. Because I used to sing in a place in Canada called Le Cabaret. It mm -hmm. was in Toronto, Canada. <coughs> and the owners, Mr. and Mrs. Cook, they, they thought I was fantastic, you know. And they had just come into a windfall because uh, they were in the insurance business and they were insuring tobacco crops in northern Ontario, Canada. Oh. And they, they went 20 years without a bad season. So they became multimillionaires. Ooh, lucky. They lucky so, and they always loved wonderful old-time songs yeah, yeah. you know so they came to toronto built a building yeah and then the basement they decided to make it a cabaret oh my. so they brought in the most fabulous chefs from europe france all over mm -hmm. europe yeah. and the singers they got from the william morris office yeah, yeah. and i was the first singer they got oh and and I was enchanted with their story. I couldn't believe it. I was very new in the business, too. Mm -hmm. Anyway, they were wonderful. At my, rehear at my rehearsal that afternoon, they were both sitting in the audience. It mm -hmm. was amazing. You never get the owners to sit in the audience on a rehearsal. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know All that. right, yeah. And so they said, anyway, they loved my show, and they said, look, here's a list of songs that my wife and I are madly in love with, and if you sing these songs, you'll be invited back time and time again to the Lurk Cabaret. But you have to make arrangements and everything. <laughs> but wait a minute. Yeah. What happened is they did me a favor yeah. because when they gave me the list, I thought, oh my God, these are so ancient. Yeah. I thought these songs were ancient. Okay. You know, like, like uh, Be My Little Baby Bumblebee and Walking My Baby Back Home and, yeah. and, uh, and then uh, what else? Uh, uh, um, it Had to Be You, whatever. It went on and on and on. And then I went home to New York City. I got the arranger. That's right. All I right. got all the music together. Yeah. And uh, I came back to the club, and they thought they that was the best the best show they ever had were me singing all these old songs. In the meantime, you talk about luck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the uh, A and R men, the artist representative from a, a big recording company, came in, heard me sing all those songs, mm -hmm. and he said, "How many of those songs can you do?" I said, how many do you want me to do? That's right. <laughs> Good answer. Yes. Oh, Tony, you're right on the ball, baby. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, and sure enough, believe it or not, I have to show you this. I have this. I have, I, oh, no, forgive me for bending over and stuff. Oh, I can't find my CD. That's right. But anyway, this album is still selling yeah. on Amazon.com. Oh, wonderful. And that's because of Mr. and Mrs. Cook. Wonderful. wonderful. They really did. They, they put you on the right track. Yeah. They mm -hmm. put me on the right track. Yeah, yeah they were really. And then from there, you went to the Carson Show, and you went to uh, the the, uh, the the Franklin Show when you were with Joan Rivers and Regis Philbin and everything else. Oh yes, and then Regis called us uh, one day. I used to be uh, one of the executives of the Copa Girl yeah, Alumni yeah. Club. Okay. So he called and he said, "How many of the uh, girls can you bring to the show?" I said, "How many do you want?" You see, another small great woman. answer. Oh, small Tony. Woman, very small. <laughs> <laughs> so we got, a, we got a hold of six beautiful Copa girls. Yeah, yeah. And we brought them to the uh, his film and show. Yeah. And uh, we had a great time. And what we did, he was, you know, he's wonderful at interviewing people. He interviewed all six of us. And then he said, uh, oh, look at Tony. Look how tall she is. You know, everybody thinks I'm so tall. I don't know why. Yeah. Anyway, so he said, I said, look, I said, we're going to do... Uh, a dance, okay? Yeah, We're yeah. just going to do a dance, yeah. So then we do, okay, sashay to the right, sashay to the left, and then you take, you, you make, take a bow, and then you make another bow, and then you take, and then you exit. And so he said, okay. So he stood in the middle, and he danced with us. Yeah. And the girls followed out the uh, all mm -hmm. of the steps that mm -hmm. I laid out. And it turned out to be great, and uh, we were invited yeah. again. Oh, it wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Is it possible to show again the picture of Tony? Um, 
uh, very briefly, please, is if it's uh, um, possible. We'd appreciate to see the pictures again. Oh, we got some pictures of Tony. Oh, yes, yeah, yes, those yes, fabulous yes, pictures. Yes, to. Oh, Tony, we have to see them. That's yes, right. Yes. Oh, here, uh, I think your husband just came in too, Tony. Oh, that's well, good. We, we got to talk about him. Yeah. Yes, I'm glad. Yeah, we're yeah. going to bring him in, but let's take a look at these pictures again. Yes, uh, you look absolutely yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Yes. Actually, yeah. this one is one of the albums that I made for MGM Records. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. It's called This One is the Tony. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This one is the Tony, yeah, yeah, and uh, this is just one of the albums, and it opens up, and it's even more interesting when it opens up, mm -hmm. yeah. And this album and the five other albums, they kept me working for twenty-five years, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. on the road, uh -huh. all every hotel on the North American continent, London, England, yeah, uh, Teatro La Perla in Venezia. Uh, all in South and America. You look so beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it's absolutely thank you, thank gorgeous. You. That's um, wonderful. And there's yeah. the other one. And there is the one yeah. that I have Mr. and Mrs. Cook to thank for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, sings the Roaring Twenties. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's and very popular. And Some people yeah. love it. They really loved it. And which label was, yeah. was, uh, what was that, Tony? Songs. That was MGM. MGM, okay. Yes, uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. And what else? And, have then, we and then, oh, this album's interesting. And there you go with oh, yeah. Barbara there Walters again. Barbara mm -hmm. Walters again. Yeah. Yes. And we're looking forward to seeing her, hopefully, because September 15th of this month, we're having the Latin Quarter Alumni Club get together. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so I, we're sending her an invitation. Wow. Yeah. And our first, she was the one that inspired, inspired mm -hmm. us to right. do this. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, hopefully she'll show up. And I know on one of the times she didn't show up, but she sent champagne for everybody. Oh, yeah. that's wonderful. And she's so great. You know, the day, I didn't tell you this story, yeah. but the day that uh, we met her on the corner of uh, 48th Street and Broadway, where she renamed the street Lou Walters yeah. Way, mm -hmm. she invited uh, the girls to dinner, to lunch with her. And so we went to lunch, and, and she was telling us stories so gracious, about her yeah. father. But she also asked us to tell any stories that we knew yeah, yeah, about yeah. her father. She was very much loving, loving to her yeah, father. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what else have we got and there? Wait a minute. <coughs> okay, all right, okay. So finally, oh, yeah, see, we're Lou sitting there, there dining at this table. Yeah. And uh, she gave, she said, this is my phone number if you need anything. And call me, and then she hands everybody an envelope, and I open up the envelope, and there's a hundred dollars in it. Oh my! I want, and in those days, a hundred dollars was a lot of this money. This was not a long time ago. This was 2006. Oh, 2006. <laughs> oh, a right. small as, amount of money. As, uh, okay. All right. So okay. I said, Oh, Barbara, <laughs> you didn't have to do this. Why? Why would you do this? You know, yeah. we're so happy to be here with you and celebrating your father's vibrations. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. She said. This is what my father would have done. Oh, isn't that yeah. sweet? That's uh, very nice. It is. Yeah. That's very, very gracious. Very nice. yeah. She's isn't a that wonderful nice? human yeah. being. Really. Yeah. And oh, yeah. And Tony with your little top hat. Yes. And uh, and your feather over there. Oh yes. And you look adorable. I'm very fond of feathers. As a matter of fact, yeah. I work with a lot of feathers. I almost brought some feathers today. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of furs. Yeah. Oh. Because that was, that was the glamour era. Of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. Used yeah. to have all these long things and all different colors and everything else. Absolutely. Yeah, it was and, fabulous. And so because I needed those furs mm -hmm. uh, or even those wonderful feathers because when well, I went look how adorable you look over there. Oh my God, Tony. That's one of the albums. Oh, songs. Tony. Yeah. You look. Really Spanish and Italian. Yeah, yeah. Those, and are, those are my Italian yeah. songs. And this and was on find MGM? It, you can also? find it on iTunes. On iTunes, yeah. All right. That's, oh, look how beautiful iTunes, you look. Tony, yeah. you look so beautiful. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> and here we are. We're back in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how wonderful. <laughs> I, I wanted to tell you about my husband, Dr. Yeah, Philip Terman. Yeah, all right. Who yeah. is here right now. Yeah, he just I, I, almost walked in. We were about I, to ask you that question. And yes. I wanted to tell you uh, that he was the co-writer yeah. of every one of the books that I wrote. Yeah. He helped me with Legs wow. Galore. Yeah, hold He's it up so the audience can... Yeah, 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 there you go. Yes, fact, my husband's picture is on the back here. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Because... Uh, we were all celebrating at Patsy's restaurant. All right. And here's Philip, my husband, Professor Patsy's. Columbia. Everybody used to eat at Patsy's. The Sinatra used to eat there. They still do. Yeah, in fact, a Sinatra's favorite dish used to be, I think, key lime pie oh. at the end. Key lime, he loved key lime pie. Uh -huh. And then he also liked the spaghetti with, I think, the marinara sauce. Oh, is yeah. that right? Yeah, but the key lime pie was his favorite. It's oh, my okay. favorite, too. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Oh, yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But go ahead. Let me, let me see. Well, let me anyway, see. Anyway, so, but, well, you know the pictures. In it, but that's Philip. And then he helped me with also uh, the uh, Copacabana sex campaign. Yeah. All right. Yes. Hold that up. Uh, yeah. Hold that up he so helped. we can see it. He's yeah. the co-writer mm -hmm. on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... Uh, I wouldn't be able to do anything without him. My husband happens to be a, a wonderful, wonderful a versatile husband. genius. Yes. Yeah, and, and he's also a fabulous dentist. 
<laughs> oh, wait, I'm going to get around Okay, to you're going to get around to that, <laughs> yeah. too. Okay, as a fact, all right. He's a professor at Columbia. And he's a professor at Columbia. Very yes, good. Yes, I and, told you all about it. And he also uh, plays over at the... Uh, uh, yes, as a matter of fact, uh, Philip has the jazz quintet at the famous Friars Club. Friars Club. Club. At 57 East, 55th Street. And you're the featured for singer. S for 17 years. Okay. And I'm the featured singer. Yeah, wonderful. But, wonderful. He, but he's versatile. Yeah. He started with Stan Kenton when he was just oh, a youngster. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah, mm. playing the clarinet and the yeah. saxophone. Yeah. And, and he has been yeah. the dentist of all famous jazz musicians in America, yeah. that's starting wonderful. with Dizzy Gillespie. Oh, isn't that wonderful? And all the saxophone well, players, so their teeth don't fall out, and their lips feel look good and everything? Well, the, mm. you're partly right, but it's very important to get your embouchure correct. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. Yes. I don't know if you ever played an uh, instrument, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you cannot produce the, the wind, the air, that's yeah. right. if you don't have the right am mouth embouchure yes. correct. Yeah, because, because my, my conductor for, 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 for my shows, I <coughs> uh, used to play saxophone, but then he says his lip uh, uh, something happened with his lip or something, so he went to the keyboard. He plays a fabulous keyboard. Though. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's he should have known my husband, Dr. Yeah. Philip Turman, because yeah. he would have fixed it. He yeah. knows how to fix those situations. Wow. It's enough. Like Sonny it's Rollins, yes. yes. oh, Jimmy wonderful. Heath. Yeah, they're all wonderful. his patients today. Yeah, isn't that As a wonderful. matter of fact, I want him to write a book. Yeah. He I is so interesting because yeah. of all these famous jazz musicians mm -hmm. that he has been the dentist of. Yeah. And you know, when, when a famous person sits in a dental chair, mm -hmm. yeah. he starts to talk about interesting stories in his life. Anecdotes. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. oh yeah, he, yes. could, he could do a whole story on every yeah. one of these yeah. jazz musicians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. All right, so let's get back to the Copa. And let's get back to all this, the sex capades. Yes, yes, yes. The yes. sex capades. Yes. Goodness. Well, actually, the reason on. I wrote the word yes. sex capades is because I thought I could sell more books. Oh, okay. But it oh. was what I really did is talk about all the stars okay. that worked there. Okay, and this is written by Tony Carroll. Terman and her husband, Dr. Dr. Phil Philip Terman. Terman. And show it up one more time. Just hold okay. it up one more and time. Okay, here we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Terman. Drew, if we could see and that, uh, that wonderful picture of that book. Yeah. Here we are. Okay, this is... Yeah. And they can uh, they can find that where on, uh, on Amazon. On Amazon, com. yeah, beautiful yeah. book uh -oh. with wonderful illustrations and everything else, and gorgeous girls. Oh, gorgeous and, girls! Yeah, and I'm absolutely. looking at all the gorgeous Lex girls. I'm getting all excited over here. <laughs> Holy, I'm going absolutely okay, bananas. Wait a minute. We okay. have one more. <laughs> we have one more okay. book. Okay. <clears throat> okay. This is called Laugh Your Fat Off, yeah, which yeah. my husband. Uh, help well, me write too. Laugh mm -hmm. your fat off. That's laugh what I need. I, I have to lose twenty pounds. No, you don't. Yeah, yes, I do. No, and you. that was written by you, and also by your <laughs> by husband, your husband, Dr. Dr. Philip Terman. Yes. Yeah. So, and so in between uh, singing engagements, which was a lot of them were up in Canada. Yeah. I used to instead of coming to New York, I would go to the nearest spa. Yeah. Oh. And when I was at the spa, because I, I love to take notes and keep journals, I have all my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I used to keep a journal of everybody at the spa that had a miracle. Oh, wow. wonderful. And they really, I would go there just because it was comfortable and because I could always lose three to five pounds. Yeah. Okay. But they were there for reasons like tumors and oh boils. God, yeah. and, and did they really have miracles? They had miracles. They yeah. had miracles. Yeah. And I happened to keep this journal. And when 15 years went by, I finally had a book. And 9-11 came along, and yeah. I was, had started this book. Yeah. And then when I was listening to the, the, the TV on 9-11, they said, you need, to, you need to eat comfort food. And I said, not me. I'm not eating any comfort food. <laughs> I, I have to keep my waistline. And lo and behold, I decided to start this book, Life yeah, Your Fat Off. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, the yeah. idea is uh, a little tips before you get to the food yeah, for yeah, everybody right, out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Little tips before you get to the food. Okay. Mm -hmm. Program yourself. Before you get to look at the food, yeah, yeah. that you are not going to eat fast, you're going to eat very slowly, and you're going to chew your food, and you're going to eat Which we don't very, do. very small portions. Yes, and you have to, you have to swallow. You got to swallow. Swallow works. Yeah. All right. Now, swallow comfort works. food. I want to know what comfort food is. What is comfort? What food? they were talking the about food. was <laughs> hot dogs and hamburgers <laughs> and with all the nitrates and everything. The oh, hot dogs and nitrates. Oh, so yeah. 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 Well, not good for you. But anyway, one of the hints that I have in here um, from Laffy Fatto is that uh, Philip and I would go to the Friars to eat practically every night, and I noticed when they brought the the bread basket. Yeah. I would always reach over to the for the bread like this. So then I. I tattooed my desired weight right here. 
Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. I did. And every time oh. I'd go to get, to get the yeah. bread, yeah. I would look at my weight as <laughs> yeah, yeah, I said, oh, I used to do the same thing because they used to have these <laughs> fabulous long, thin rolls at yeah. the fryers. And before we, I used to have dinner all the time, I used to eat maybe five or six of them. And then they used to say, Alan, Alan, uh, I'm out of bread. Bring me, uh, bring me another basket. I need another basket. And then I couldn't eat the food. I was so That's bad. always the way. So yeah. those were the tips that I tried to get. Yeah. And then the other thing, my husband has a perfect position. Zeke. Yeah. And how he did it, he did it with isometric exercising. I don't know what if you've that? ever heard of isometric exercise. Have you? No, I don't know. What is it telling well, me? I'm telling you, it's, the it's word, like, not the it's, like in the it's like holding your muscles tight. In other words, when you pick up a phone, you hold it tightly. And then you're nourishing fresh oxygen and blood yeah. into the into those muscles. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And um, Although he might have been sedentary, yeah. he still could do that to his legs. Yeah. Like there's a way of sitting in a chair where you could do isometric. Oh, wow. So he wrote a whole paragraph on the isometric yeah. exercising yeah. for people that don't have the time. Yeah. But then you have to have the awareness. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it does work. Yeah. It certainly right. does work on my okay. husband. You've seen him. Yeah. Right. Now, uh, uh, you were the, the first volunteer uh, to go to the moon. <laughs> Yes, Tony. You, you that, read that, right? No, no. You I remember that. the song, Fly Me to the Moon. Fly oh, yeah, me yeah, to yeah, the yeah, moon. that's good. But you wanted to go to the moon? Well, I wanted to go to the moon since I was a kid because in school we had a teacher that used to uh, teach current events. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the way she taught current events, she made me think that by the time I was 18, yeah. I could go to Mars for lunch. Uh -huh. I don't know. She worked on my fantasies or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. Mars, and yes. sure enough, when I got to New York, I kept thinking, when am I going to go to Mars for lunch? You know, and, nobody's and talking about Mars. Yeah, but she wasn't talking about a Mars bar, was she? No, no, no. no. no okay, because there's um, Milky Way bars oh, yes. and Mars bars. I've heard But of uh, go to Mars. Yeah. Yes, yes, I've heard uh, that. Oh, now, how long would that take you to okay. go to Mars for lunch? Oh, uh, anyway, it never happened. They don't, they don't <laughs> have Mars. They don't have a restaurant out there. Oh, oh. But I decided to write to the Navy Department and volunteer to be the first singer to go to the moon. Wow. Oh. And this was way back. Yeah, I got yeah. a letter. Yeah. Uh, and they said they weren't ready. But I used to tell everybody, they wrote to me and they said, I'm too tall for the capsule. But you should have told them, I've got my bag. I'm already here. And I'm waiting for you to, 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 to tell me that I can go. <laughs> You know what? They never did call me. They never called they you. They never called oh. me. Isn't that amazing? Oh. Well, yeah. well, they Wait. weren't ready for you yet. But, but they're ready for you now, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm ready for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You change your mind, sis. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. This, and oh. then um, I, I, you mentioned that. Yeah, but the you're also very much interested in a subject which I'm interested Russia? myself. You're interested in exploring spiritual disciplines mind control, parapsychology, and metaphysics. I love those subjects, to tell oh. you the truth. So yeah. tell me yeah. more what you're doing well, about that. Well, actually, that, again, that was, that's been my lifetime hobby. Yeah. And I was basically introduced to all these ideas through the Edgar Cayce readings. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and he's a gentleman that's very famous from Virginia Beach and Atlantic University, which is now teaching paranormal subjects. And that's where you, you decided to go into show business. No, that's no, not it at it's all. It's not it? <laughs> no. Okay, well, keep telling me. What, what was it? it let, let me hear it. Let I, me hear about the mind control. Because I studied mind, mind control also. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And I, how I, did you like it? Uh, well, uh, the only thing I remember was that uh, um, to uh, close, your, close your eyes and put a white light over something that you really want to do and just uh, picture it. Picture yourself doing it. And uh, that was one of the one of the mind control things that I was taught. But it's an exercise, yeah. Yeah, it was an exercise. It's a discipline and an exercise. That's right. And that's it. This is what I got from all this metaphysical world. Mm -hmm. uh, is the discipline that came to me. In other words. Uh, a lot of us have a tendency to worry about a lot of things yeah. that never really happen to us. And so uh, the discipline world tells you to keep your mind on what you want mm -hmm. and off of what you don't want. And if you don't have clarity about that, what a you take yes. two yellow pads, yeah. and over here you write what you don't want in your life, and over here you write what you do want in your life. Yeah. And then 
you concentrate on what you do want in your life, and then you have to discipline your mind to watch where the attention is at that moment. Yeah. You've got to watch the attention of the mind because the mind is powerful and the mind can make anything happen. Yeah, that's right. And true. visualizations come yes, from that, yes. mm -hmm. which is that white light, which is yeah, that white mm -hmm. light. That's right. See, see yeah, yeah. If the white light keeps you focused. You yeah, see. yeah, that yes. was. I think and that if was you stay focused, you will achieve it. True. It's the power of the mind. Yeah. You, you probably have read a lot of books about it. Yes. Yeah, well, I, I, was, uh, I, I used to go to class, uh, I think uh, the, my teacher's name was uh, Silva. Jose Silva. Jose Silva, He yeah. was my teacher, too. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, my goodness. Yes. <laughs> we do. My teacher. I want to ask you a very quick question because we have, winding now towards the end of our show, we have about three minutes left. You're also an, op an ordained minister of divine science. Please tell us more very quickly about that. And the last two minutes are yours, so it's all... The well, actually, uh, the ordained minister really comes out of the discipline world, mm -hmm. science, philosophy, and religion. Yeah. Yeah. And so I became very interested in divine science. I love all religions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was born Catholic, but I am very curious. I've studied everything. Mm -hmm. And I finally decided I love divine science because it's very pure. And so I went to the Colorado College. Yeah. And, uh, and then we did our extra classes for 10 years here in New York City. Mm -hmm. And so I became an ordained minister. And uh, that's what that's all about is that it really helped to enrich my own personal life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I believe in mm -hmm. prayer. I'm a very prayed up lady. Yeah. yeah. And I, I believe in praying and sending prayer to people who need the that's healing. That's wonderful. Yeah, isn't that yes. wonderful. I believe it, in that yeah. too. Absolutely. <coughs> you know, and I love it. I love it. Yeah. yeah. My, my, my ex wife was Italian. Of course, I'm Jewish. And uh, I used to go to mass with her every, uh, you know, every Sunday, and uh, and I used to see, uh, you know, uh, them passing the basket all the time. I say, this is, why, what a wonderful business this is. <laughs> I, I say, so the thing is, I decided to bring my own basket. <laughs> so I brought my own basket. You're putting me and on. I, no, and I started to pass it, and you know, and, and the priest came up to me. He says, he says, listen, he says, you can't do this. I says, what do you mean I can't do this? Listen, there's two bosses in the church, the boss and myself. We're both Jewish, and the rest are all. Uh, followers, we're all per per pernicious, you know, whatever it is, whatever you call. I, I says, I, I says, if you could, I says, let me. I says, this is why. He says, listen. He says, you can't do it. And then all of a sudden, the congreg. I says, well, if I can't do it, I'm leaving. And the and the congregation went on their knees and begged me to stay. And that's what happened. Oh, okay. Yeah, I never went back. That's a joke. Yeah, yeah, that's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Continue, sorry, because we don't have much time left. <laughs> Tell us to you what you think, what you feel to our viewers. I, I want you want to have okay. your feeling. Well, it's bit. wonderful. It's beautiful what you just said about uh, your prayers and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what um, else? I didn't quite get the question. Okay. Well. Okay. She wants you. To, she wants to know about your special dream. You know. Is that right? And what you want to fulfill in your lifetime. That's what she wants you to know. <sighs> well, wants actually, to know. Uh, my dream is always because I, I'm into prayer and healing, mm -hmm. is that Philip and I, my husband and I, continue to have a great life mm -hmm. and a healthy life. Wonderful. And uh, we pray for all the members of the family. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, I have two stepsons and two step-grandchildren. Oh my. And uh, they're fabulous children. We just had a, a wonderful reunion up in Cooperstown because our grandson, 11, yeah. uh, is a fabulous baseball player. Yeah, yeah. And we were all together in this house for one week and we were cheering him on every day at Cooperstown when he was playing huh? and uh, we would go at 9 o'clock in the morning for a, a game and then we would go at 3 o'clock for the game and at 7 o'clock and at 7 o'clock we'd be there for the game and it was just so beautiful to be with family mm -hmm. and to feel the love surging yeah, through us. Yeah. All one is a purpose to make sure the grandson wins every game. Yeah. Oh By my. the way, out of 30, out of 30 yeah. Teams. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They came in nine. Oh, they wow. came in ninth. Nine. That's very mean, good. They out of thirty. Score. That's out not bad. 30. No, it's score. not bad. And yes. how old is this group? Oh, of, he's twelve. He's twelve years old. Well, that's not bad. That's, that's wonderful. That's really that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I when I was twelve. If I can remember that far back. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you remember before, but <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. there you are. Yeah. <laughs> so the other dream is 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 a uh, uh, is yeah. a. Um, a dream that I've had no. because of my writing. Yeah. I yeah. have this uh, screenplay that is called uh, Tony's Oil Story, and I would like to have an agent pick it up yeah. and make yeah. it a movie. Yeah, well, you yeah. got that's, that's it. But you got a visual.